1234. Welcome to Interceptor Beyond podcast. Today my guests are Annalisa and Fabio. Hello listeners. So we are your mom and I am Annalisa and I'm Fabio. And before we continue with the interview, I would like to remind our listeners to follow this podcast on Spotify or any other platform that you prefer. Go ahead, just press follow, subscribe, whatever. It will help the podcast a lot. Thank you very much. Guys, I discovered you like uh, these days I discover bands on Instagram and I'm doing the wrong thing. I completely judge the book by its cover. I, I don't know. It's my thing now these days. And I really liked uh, your Instagram account, you know? It's like super polished and like really juicy colors. Uh yellow is one of my probably my favorite color. So I was like, okay, yellow. All right, I'm going to check it out, you know? Hopefully, hopefully, you know? And I checked out your music and I really liked it. Like, really loved it. You know, like all your albums. Really good stuff. Energetic stuff, you know? Oh, thanks. And yeah, that's my part. My boring part of talking about <laughs> No, that's not boring at all. Like, I, I never heard that someone that liked us through the color. So that's already something new for us. I like this. Yeah, I love it. Can you describe their music? It's very yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Energe yeah. Like sunny, yellow, energetic, passionate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how did it all start? Ooh, so I don't know how far back you went on, on Instagram in terms of stalking, but it started as a, a three-piece, 2016-15. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And then, like, long story short, three-piece, one album and one EP. And then uh, our guitarist left for New Adventures. And then we've decided to adventure ourselves as a two-piece. And then here we are since. And that's when Tropical mm -hmm. Fuzz, the album, came up. And I know here comes the Austrian connection that I found. Is that you were inspired by the band White Miles. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. They, we, when we've seen them the first time, they were supporting Eagles of Death Metal. And so we didn't have any expectations um, but we always like to see the support band being, being a, a band that is starting ourselves. So we're just like, let's support, you know, the big, ba the small bands and see how they are and so on. And we, I remember us being absolutely kind of love of the first sight and hearing as well. Like it was amazing. I, I love how, how she's describing a small band as playing. I know, the, uh, no. <laughs> I know, fuck off. Well, what well, was the venue? <laughs> it was the uh, Kentish Town yeah. Academy. It's yeah, like all, a, all right. Three, three or four thousand people. I mean, okay, so so no offense, White Miles, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. But like as a, as a support band then. So ignore the, yeah. the, the small band bit, smaller than the headliner. Mm -hmm. But still, we, we, we had much more fun watching them, to be honest. Than Eagles of Death Metal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can I call you Art? Is that okay? Sure. My accent for Arthur is not pristine enough. But um, there's no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. At, at the time we discovered White Mouse, we were actually playing a different band. It was a completely yeah. different setup, and we played uh, kind of a, a fusion of electronic music with rock. And we were doing that for a few years, and uh, we were kind of missing out the fun of playing live instruments. You know, where yeah. you can fuck up you can change the tempo you can play faster slower you know the, that roller coaster <laughs> the drummers do and um by accident we saw white miles and we were completely in love with them yeah. and I, I remember we had this conversation like wow this is what we should be doing you know we should be having fun on stage and we actually i, I don't think at that time i know we i'm lying we had seen other two-piece bands right but white miles was like completely yeah. different the energy and the attitude it was like wow this this is the thing isn't yeah, it yeah 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 i think it was the energy where, where was it and when this was kentish town and it was bush 2000 i would say maybe I don't we know, have actually 13 14 or 14 15. it's a bit of an awkward story because it was one week before they play at the bataclan mm. i don't know if you remember oh yeah i remember there was the, the bataclan massacre so we met them one week before that show. And we actually, we went to the merch stand. We talked to them. Yeah. And we also talked to the guy who was their friend who was killed. Fuck. We met that guy as well. Damn, man. Well, yeah, I remember that. Everybody remembers that. 
Mm -hmm. So this was right before, just before you, uh, before the your mom, right? Yeah. So then you started your mom. It was one of the main inspirations, right? And then you went as a duet. Then we went. Uh, well, we started as a trio, and then we went as a duet, and this is how we decided to remain forever. <laughs> and how did you record it at home or uh, somewhere in the record studio? No, we, we went for we went for a studio that we we've recorded the EP in this studio is uh, Anchor Baby Studios is in the middle of nowhere in Kent. Yeah. Which oh, was... the, the first album we did in a church. Yeah, but we're talking about the transition and then what we did oh, the transition. as a two piece, no? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the present. There's and actually, the future. No, you know that you, you can jump from 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 topic to topic. It's not it's not an uh, interrogation. It's a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Free your mind. So let's free our minds and let's talk about all the places. No, the first. So the first album we recorded in the church in Leeds, right? Yeah. And that was pretty cool. So, so you, you, which, which one is it? Is it Road Rage, the album? Yeah. Road Rage. Yeah. Road Rage in the church. Because the, stu the studio was kind of a, a converted church, no? So we stayed there as yeah. well. No, they did a brilliant thing. They yeah. had two big studios. The main one, as you can imagine, was in the, the main church hall. So really interesting acoustics. Uh, they also offered uh, accommodation to the bands. So we stayed there for four or five days. Yeah. I During think, winter, yeah. it, Leeds in winter is not the place to be, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, but it was it was pretty cool. It was it was for us. It was I don't know. We were just feeling that ah oh, that that sensation. Ah, oh, we're recording and we're staying like four days now together, mm -hmm. the three of us in a small room, going to the supermarket and then just buying beers, like not taking it that serious as well. Like yeah. it was just like oh. The TV was not working, so we were stuck with uh, some DVDs. And that's how I got to know Primus. I've never heard Primus before, and they had a whole Primus live DVD. And I was absolutely in love with the guy and the way he plays the bass. Oh, funny thing. this The, the studio, after they closed at night, they would lock us. They would lock us in. Oh yeah, we cannot. So leave. we couldn't go out. For which reason? For security reasons. Yeah, so we know. were there, and there was like this alarm system. So we we had to stay in the, the accommodation. The accommodation they had like a PlayStation One <laughs> and a DVD player, and they had like a Nirvana, a Ramones, and a Primus DVD. So we watched that for five days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, probably the first night it's it's okay, but then after the second night, maybe you go a little bit. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's true. It it was it was proper weird. It was it was kind of forcing us to to live together. Well, me and Fabio, we we are a couple, so we already know how the deal is living together and twenty four seven. But with Akos, which was our guitarist at the time even though we're doing gigs and, and recording and, and so on, but never like stuck in a room. For like, long, for like, yeah, 24 long. hours. We and we had food poison. Food, they, food poisoning. they had food poisoning. I was lucky I escaped that, but then I smell both of their shit. So that's when like intimacy. Dude, it was you know, brutal. You had the pandemic experience before the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I never thought about that, Me but too. it's true. <laughs> it's very, very true. But it's funny because after that, you decided to go, like, it, it happened. It happened that now you're a duet, so you probably killed the guy and ate him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's still wandering in Leeds. That's why you have the food poisoning, but you don't, ac like, uh, accept what you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't cook him properly. No. Fucking Brazilians that like their, their steak medium rare. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you mentioned Brazil, right? So we need to mention to people. Did you mention? I, I don't. I don't think you mentioned that you're no Brazil. Like, can you explain to the listeners, please? Go for it. I think I'm talking so much. Are you? <laughs> Am I not? Because I can go on. Like, yeah. I know sometimes I need to. to... You, you just one of you should just talk all the time because I don't want to talk. It's not my <laughs> asking silly questions, and that's it. So we met. Uh, we met in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, ages ago, Ani at the time she was working in a rock bar that I used to to go to. And then when we met, we started talking about music and stuff. And I remember like one of my my things was I was thinking, oh, I really wanted to make some music with you. You know, at the time I had a band with my sister, and I, uh, you know, in my head I thought well, it'd be really cool if we had a band with two two girls playing and killing it. You know. 
it, this is back in 2008 yeah. or something. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, back then, especially in Brazil, you didn't see many, many female musicians in, in the uh, rock scene. And then from that, so we moved to London. So got married, moved to London. And then in a way, we didn't start a band straight away. We, we took a while. To, we kind to, of quit music yeah, for, a, for a while. We were kind of, let's just leave and, and do the norm thing. Let's but we got get bored. jobs and pay bills, you know. Yeah. You're in a foreign country. You don't have family or anyone to help you. Everything costs really expensive. So for a year or two, we just focus in surviving. Yeah. And that's when we, we kind of started having cheap Saturday nights with our buddy Gabriel. Um, so he was was with him that we did the first band here, Plastic. Um, and the whole idea was just like, oh, let's just listen to music, music we, we cannot hear in the clubs and so on. But we would love to, to, to hear that and having a beer and talking and so on mm -hmm. until we started having the bug of creating again. But we were like, no, let's create, but we were never going to play live. No, no, not anymore. Mm -hmm. And then we start playing live again. And then since then, we have never stopped. So yeah. it, with, it was a great experience as well. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, Gabs, he, he, he's kind of uh, a music producer. So basically, he rec we recorded every, everything in his home studio. Yeah. And that's, you know, for us, that was like amazing because you could just go... You know, most people, they go to a studio from nine to six. And then with him, we could just go we 8 at p.m. Six. Yeah. We would start recording like at midnight and we would record until five in the morning until someone basically passed out. Usually me, because I was, I, I was uh, the one who got tired before. So I start sleeping. So that's when they were like photobombing my beautiful positions. Any but... And you can Fine. sleep at any situation. I can. I have no problem she with sleeping. You could sleep through an earthquake. I am very blessed. You are blessed. Uh, I'm a complete opposite. <laughs> it's really easy for, to wake me up. Me too. <laughs> but yeah, so, so two Brazilians and, and I'm half Austrian. So I have family in Vienna as well. And we, we managed to, uh, as your mom and as a three piece, 2018, I think we played actually a gig in Vienna, but I cannot remember the name of the venue. Oh, 2017. 2017. And the band, my cousin's band is Tankris. Mm -hmm. And so we played with them, but, and that was the only time we, we went there to, to play a gig actually. Yeah. After that, just visiting family and then playing in London. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to another band that is located also in London and they're fresh. They're just like there only three years. And I asked them, what would you ask you, your mom, you know, <laughs> because uh, he's like, oh, wow, we can ask these questions. All right. So they, so I, I cheated a bit, you know, so I uh, asked them to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> For them, it would be useful to know how did you get your first gigs in London? Oh, we got our first gig actually supporting ourselves. So we were having a gig with Plastique, Wait, our previous uh, the, the the previous band we had. That was mm -hmm. our first gig. Yeah, as your and mom. And then we were already starting with the Your Mom project aside. So the first band did not finish. We already started playing around with Your Mom, but then we were <laughs> playing around with Your Mom. I love when it's like just like that. And then um, we had like just one new, like one song that we've created. The other ones, they were like covers. And we needed... Yeah a support band for that night and it was kind of a last minute thing. So we were like, oh, it wouldn't it be funny if we just support ourselves? Like we go on stage, play with this band and then we go after and play with Plastique. Yeah. So that was the first one. Yeah. But to help out your friend, um, our first experience playing live here was playing at the Dublin Castle. Ah, that's true. With Plastique. And one of the struggles that we had in that group for a few years is that here in London is actually quite difficult to find a scene it's a really really monster of a city you know it's too big and everything is you know spread out across the city it's not like you know some people say oh just go to camden and that's where you're going to find the rock scene no it's completely depending on the day of the week you won't find the rock scene there actually <laughs> yeah and then uh but there's a lot of um promoters here that is basically pay to play or one of those like you don't get paid, but you get a slot to play or you have to sell tickets up front. So my advice is like, 
avoid these people. Yes. Because it's not only I call these um, I call these gigs the uh, fast food gigs because it's basically one band plays their friend like drive through gigs. Drive sorry. through drive through <laughs> gigs like McDonald's, you know. So one band plays. Some people walk in. The band finishes. They walk out. Then the next band goes on. Then their friends come in, watch it. Then they leave. And the place is never really, it never really happens. It doesn't have like a, the right atmosphere for a live show. You don't get to know anyone. No. Lots of these bands, I don't know if they're insecure or unexperienced. They don't really talk to anyone. It's awful. So for us, I, I don't know when it was the first time that we actually felt like this, this is the right place to be, you know? Wait, no, wait you're talking plastic or your mom? No, I'm talking about plastic. Plastic. For many, for, for a few years, we struggled playing. Fair enough. We, we were trying to find a scene, but we, we just couldn't. I, I think we never found it with Plastic. We had like a great gig, which was kind of our last ones, last two gigs. They were great. But again, then we started to book gigs ourselves because we were like, okay, so if, if we don't have help from, from others, mm -hmm. we we're just going to approach the venues and say okay so we are organizing this night we get the bands we want to play with and mm -hmm. that was it but but we plastic unfortunately we never found a scene that we would belong and, and feel happy in or we could observe from other bands and other bands observe from us you know that kind of exchange that it's so cool um but with your mom luckily after this first gig, I don't remember which one was the second that we met. We met Andy Cavendish from Alternative Gathering. He doesn't like that people mention his oh, name. Oh, yeah. So nobody contact Andy Cavendish, all right? He hates being contacted. From directly. an Alternative <laughs> Gathering. Don't contact him. <laughs> but um, he, he, he's a fucking cool dude. And I, we uh -huh. always call him our godfather because we, we had a gig booked with him. We didn't know him at all. Um, but the main band, which was a is a big deal here in London in the scene, but no no names to mention. They pull out kind of last minute and and then we just receive a call from Andy just like, oh, so this, this gig cannot happen because there is there are no drums and they were going to supply the drums. So I don't know what you guys want to do. And we so wanted to play. We were starting that we just said to Andy, okay, Andy, if we find a way to get drums, can we still have this night with you? It was like, yeah, up to you, but I, I don't know how to help. And then we started, the three of us, trying yeah. to find a place to rent a drum because we didn't have ourselves as well, managed to rent, spoke with the other band. So like, okay, guys, if everybody chips in this amount, let's have the drums, let's yeah. have the night. And that's what, that was when Andy said like, okay, this is, this is a fucking band that really wants to play and this is a band I would like to work with more. So since then, mm -hmm. he was always taking us to different venues, inviting us to play. And then we started to get to know bands like Healthy Junkies and Polypick Pockets and, and in our bands that we play until now, we actually have a tour Minatory. with them. Minatory. And then we found a scene that we did not find with the other band, but we found a scene where bands actually help each other and it's not that stupidity of competition, you know? Because I think everybody's already fucking... Like, are we going to fight for crumbles? No, let's just kind of share it and see if we can mm -hmm. have a fucking whole bread together. And everybody gains from that. You know, our fans will enjoy Healthy Junkies fan, which will enjoy this fan here. And then you start a community and then you start the word to mouth, even though we have all this social media that we have to have and deal with nowadays. But I still believe the word to mouth is the best propaganda. I think that's the one that sticks with you. You know, like we, if someone tells me, go and see White, White Miles, I might go, I might have gone. But because I've seen them first, and then I was like, ah, I was the one, me and Fabio, then talking about them. And then other people started checking them out and so mm -hmm. on. So I think that the power of the word is much stronger. And then yeah. I completely changed the subject. You but did, like it went from once. <laughs> That's but I think, normal. But, no, but I think it, it makes sense because it's the, it's the crescendo, you know? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to kind of simplify because I was thinking about the best way to find uh, a decent show in London is the best way is to talk to, to other to bands. Yes. No, talk to other bands. So talk to other bands online or if you go to their gigs, even better. Mm -hmm. Go to lots of gigs if you see like bands. Like, I think our sound actually would go well with them. Talk to them. Most bands, they're going to be quite appreciative. Yeah. And who knows, they might help you out. Like we, we managed to play the US because one band helped us. And we ended True. up going there playing lots of shows. 
uh, I think that's the most honest way to kind of find decent gigs. You can also try to book gigs yourself, but then it's a whole level of complexity. So uh, yeah, talking to bands, networking, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, don't fall for these promoters. There's a lot of idiots out there, you know, and a lot of people, they're, they're just trying to exploit bands because they don't make enough money from their gigs. So they want the, to make money from bands. So cut the middle, man. Talk to the artists, get your gigs together. As a matter of fact, we, we did play a gig with White Miles. Yeah. We booked a gig here went for Plastique, not for your mom. No, and then we your mom. No, no, ah, before. Yeah, yeah, the second. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my, my, my memory goes in timeline. <laughs> we, we met White Miles. We contacted them to support us here in London. No, we were, we were the support yeah. band uh, as Plastique. We did the show. And then lots of people came to the show and we got to know lots of other bands. We made like networking was brilliant. That night was so great. Yeah. And then after that, we already had your mom at that time, but it was still kind of at, at the very beginning. So I think, I, I don't remember if it was the same year, but at the end of the year, we ended up playing a show in London with White Miles and they eventually they came to our place. We had a few beers and yeah. all, but yeah, that's basically how it started. Did you know White Miles, uh, like personally, or it was just a complete uh, cold message? Complete cold message. Like, we, we spoke very quickly with them after that first gig with Watch Them. Yeah. I, I tried to speak a little bit with my terrible German, because I, I, I used to speak, but pff, then since here, and my grandmother sadly is not alive anymore to force me, because it was amazing. I'm not saying this as a bad thing, but she would kind of bring this back so I could, I could keep training. But, but I was trying to speak with her a little bit of, of German and she was such a freaking humble person. She is actually, well, not was, but and so easy to talk to. And I could see her, I was like, okay, that's actually not the moment for us to talk. Because you could see like the art is like being very kind to you, but having to sell the merch to the next. So I literally, we just very quickly just drop it. Like if we were to play a gig together, or book a gig, would you be interested? And then she just said, yep, yeah, contact us here. I don't recall if she gave a card or if she just said, just find us on, on, on Facebook and we can start talking. No, we actually we ended but, up speaking to their manager. Yeah, that's true. And But yeah, it was literally out of, out of the blue. We were like, we, we have these dates or would you be interested or you give me your terms when you're available, we make it happen. Yeah, because that band that I was talking about, they also asked me before, like the same situation, like they wanted to open for a band and they were asking how should they approach. Uh, and I said, like, just just talk to the people, you know, like be yeah. honest, you know, and they will dig it. That's the thing. Uh, every every band has started at some point or was that was at that position at some point. So I think if if the band already treats you like an asshole for just trying to communicate, then it's already a sign that it's not worth to open for them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And actually, this band, they also uh mentioned london being a big city uh, because they found a new drummer but he lives in dublin mm. it was easier for them to find a person in dublin than to find a, a member in somewhere in london yeah that that's one of the reasons we wanted to stick as a as a two-piece band because we realized it would be very difficult to work with a third person that lives far from us oh I'm, I'm actually i'm very <laughs> i'm very hands-on in that sense art um when we decided to start your mom, my request was I want to play the drums because I've been playing band since I was 14 and finding drummers was always the worst experience in the world and trying to keep them in the band was even harder. So the, the, the drummers, they were like drama queens, literally, like they would come play a gig and then you had to beg them, oh no, they wanted to leave the band already. So I said, no, I'm going to play the drums. So... If I want to play the I, show, I'm reliable. I'm playing, <laughs> <laughs> and I always want to play the show. So yeah, that's true. That's a good approach. And you mentioned that you went on tour, right, with the band. You you went recently last year, I think. You went on a tour in you know, North America, right? Yes, 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 no, yes. Not last uh, year. With not 2019. 2019, we went to US. You're talking about US? Yeah, US. Yeah. Yeah. So we did East, We did West Coast 2019 with this band Tarapu. Yeah, just uh, tell, tell me about the, this tour. I fucking know, it was so cool. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be as quick as I can. Uh, the first album, Road Rage, we had a label. 
Uh, and then oh. these guys, they said, we have a guy that is uh, doing like South by Southwest in Austin. But it's like a fringe, a fringe thing. And he said, can you get us a gig? He said, yeah, I can. And then the guy from the label, he got us the gig in Austin. And then he said, oh, I recommend you guys find more gigs. <laughs> We're like, no, I'm no like, kidding. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> can you help us find more gigs? I no. And then like by accident, we started, well, actually it was Akko. She found yeah. this band uh, on Instagram of all places. See, Instagram connecting people. Uh, and then uh, we, we started talking to them and we actually managed to get them a slot at the, the, the Fringe Festival during South by South, Southwest. And they said, cool. And we're going to get you guys 12 other shows in the US. Yeah. So we played like lots of places in California. We played Vegas. Where else? Uh, El, Paso, the people, El Paso. The, the, yeah, there are lots of cities that we, we played. And Austin, obviously, which was actually the, the worst kick. That it we did. was. It was the worst. <laughs> it was so game. sad. Why was it the worst? Well, <clears throat> first of all, you're competing with the, the big South, whatever, Southwest. But we thought, you know what? That there are other, there is another side, and probably people want to see as well that kind of fringe side of the festival. So we went on that with that mentality, and but the venue we were playing, it was like every, a warehouse. It was a warehouse, <clears throat> and it's still fine because it's the, twenty minutes away from the city. It's fine. Stage, everything was cool, but everything was under construction on the road, so you could not even see the venue. If you wanted to get to the venue, you have to do such a fucking zigzag that we that we were playing there almost gave up going there because we're like, okay, if we are getting pissed off getting to our own gig. Imagine the other guys are going to be like, no, yeah. fuck this. I'm going to go to the other side. So, yeah. So we ended up playing for very little people, little number of people. But it was cool. It was too cool because we, we were with the mentality. And that's the thing. When we met Tara Hu, which is the band from, from Kali at the time, they were living there. On, we had a call online to see if we were going to get along. And, and then when we have the first <clears> gig, <throat> all settled like, okay, now we're going like fucking hell. And we're going to meet face to face. And so they have their their worries, which were the same as ours. It's, it's mm -hmm. almost like a blind date. So it's like, are we going to work? Because we're we going to make all these gigs together. Do we have the same touring mentality? Not, are we going to fuck it up? Are they going to fuck it up? Whatever. And we were so similar. It was so scary. Like after the first gig, we were already like hugging and we kept looking at each other we're like, this is fucking weird. It's like we know each other like for such a long time. And we were helping each other we worked exactly the same it was it was literally a pleasure doing this tour so i think we didn't care that much that the gig was kind of a failure because we're like you know what we're in austin let's grab a beer yeah. we're gonna it's a rehearsal oh, thanks it's to an that open gig, rehearsal yeah absolutely yeah. And, la and last year you're asking we did we went to the states to actually hang out with tara yeah. and coco uh and we did a. Uh, And they have become a two piece as well. Yeah, so they're two look piece at the destiny. Well. It's, it's mental. So um, they had this idea of us doing a song together. So we did record everything, blah, blah. And then she said, oh, why don't you come here end of the year and then we can do a music video for it. And that's, that's one of the reasons we went there. Yeah. And then, but then she moved from Cali to Oklahoma. So we went there to the, to the farm, farm life. It was really fucking cool. It was really, really cool. And then we did the video to Push Me, which is the, the, the single. Which is out now. It's out now. Check it out. Push Me by Tara Hu featuring YouTube, your mom. Spotify. Apple Music. Music. <laughs> it, was, it was really, really good fun. Really good fun. And we are planning to do more for end of this year and next year. So it's, it's a friendship to, to continue and will forever. Yeah. But yeah, and then... Again, kind of going back to to the the guys asking you how to get it. I think it's just yeah, just not not being scared and mm -hmm. just asking because you have the know already. So just ask, just uh -huh. ask. And what have you learned from that tour? Maybe like or or what didn't you expect? Or maybe what <laughs> you wish you did you did something different on the tour? Oh, we learned that the US is way too big. Yeah. So. It, Any any show you have, any, there's a lot of driving involved. So luckily, we had a friend that came with us, and he was helping, sharing the burden of the driving. burden of driving. 
But even even if you're not driving, it's really exhausting to spend like we for example, we drove from Austin to El Paso and it was at least eight it was over eight hours. or ten hours, yeah. yeah. Ten hours and something. And we had to play a gig to take. Three seasons because we got snow. We've got a, a desert. Um, desert whatever, storm, a sandstorm. Storm. And then it was summer all of a sudden. And then, oh, yeah. Not complaining to be honest, because for me that was still fucking. But cool. yeah, I, was I mean, like, I, yeah. yeah, I don't recommend to anyone playing a gig and then the next day driving eight hours and then going setting up gear yeah. all over again, playing another show. That's really. It destroys you. I think, we, yeah, we, we've learned that we have kind of a, a limit on driving. If we want to last, if we want to have kind of the same energy on stage, we kind of, and we, we, we apply this, what we've learned here. So if we have a gig here that is going to take us any gig over three hours drive, we stay in the city. We don't drive back. So because that, that kind of, it's, it's safer. It's cheaper because gas is ridiculous now as well. That's one thing. I found out that my my screaming voice does not last three screaming gigs, beers, getting pissed in a row. I need to balance. I had to balance that out, which was fine, but lessons learned. I remember on the fourth gig, I was so pissed off because I could not scream. And I was just like, the fuck? And then, mm -hmm. but I found mm -hmm. out that whiskey and ginger ale did a great job to kind of cheat it a little bit. But anyway, so... We have this tour now coming up in March and we have five days in a row. So I'm already like, ah, uh, cannot drink that much. So I will have to choose my battles where I'm going to do my drinking. But it's still all good. But it was, it was more positive is when you, than negative, I guess. Well, yeah, when you do a big, a big tour like this, the first two, three nights is like party. You're just amazing. a teenager again. <laughs> and then uh, after that, you just realize I'm over it, you know. I still want to play the show, but... I don't care about drinking. I just uh, wanna, just wanna feel <laughs> healthy and, say, and do it. I would say I don't care about getting drunk. Like you don't need to get pissed head like every night. I totally agree with that. But a beer here and there, I think, is just it just gives them. Then you appreciate. I think you choose you choose how much you drink and you enjoy that drink and you're just not like binging. Like what do you usually drink on the tour? What alcohol? I'm a beer drinker, beer and tequila. So if I if I do shots is tequila, if I don't want to drink too much, but I just want to keep sipping something, then it's tequila. And this I learned with Tara, actually, because I always did tequila as a shot. And when we we'd have done this gig, I think it was Hollywood. It was also like another a, a really great night. But she was sipping like tequila and lime and a little bit of ice. So like you would drink, let's say, whiskey maybe on ice, but then adding the, the lime. And I was just like, hmm, that's, that, that's interesting. And so another, another thing I've learned that I added to my, to my menu. <laughs> but now we, we are beer drinkers. Fabio likes his bourbon, to be honest. Yeah, but when we're playing, <clears throat> I usually just stick to beer. Whatever they give for free. Um. Yeah, I asked because, uh, because uh, I had an uh, interview. I, ha I interviewed Br the doom metal band Broom. And they mentioned, yeah, we drink margaritas. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I should be asking questions about the alcohol. You know, you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, but there's I, some I funny. This. Always there's some funny stories. Yeah. Because we in this band, like we should be already veterans, but we're not. But when we started with this band, <laughs> I remember we 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 got invited to play this festival in Nottingham. Ah. Uh, and then like being us, it's how like. We we're gonna play on the Saturday or Sunday, but we went on the Friday. So we party for two days, and then we were playing the show on Sunday at two in the afternoon or something. And I had one of the worst hangovers you can imagine. One of our friends he got lost in the city. Another guy passed out in the middle <laughs> of the street. It was that kind of thing, you know. I didn't pass out, but I had this horrible two day. Hang no, over. we were, yeah. The thing is, on stage, we were just like, you know, yeah. when you're sweating and it's alcohol, so you're just like yeah. so dehydrated. And it just, but it was a great gig again. Yeah, I remember one funny thing after we played the gig, because you usually play with the hat. Then I, we, were, we went outside, <laughs> talked to some friends. I took the hat, hat off for a second, and the guy said, like, Dude, there's like vapor smoke. coming out of your head. You could see like smoke coming out of my head. That's 
how how bad it was for me. You mentioned that you so regarding the tours, do you do the booking yourself? Uh I would say yes and no. Yeah, 50-50, 50-50. We have so for Tropical Fuzz, we've signed with the label Chapter 22 and they are absolutely brilliant and gents and straightforward, no bullshit type of contract and deal. And they also have their own promotion um prom- promotion agency yeah it does. so so most of the gigs we've got last year were through them like the the big ones mm-hmm. and then we have two promoters we work constantly here in london with mm-hmm. and everything else then we try to find ourselves so we, we still always we, we are still always like checking bands out yeah. and then saying oh can we support you guys or if we if you organize this would you like to come in and so on because i think even though you, you have the security of, of certain agencies, if you just relax and just do yeah. that, then you're going to keep doing like that same circuit. So if you want to change a little bit, and there's so many places in London, we found out that we have never even seen or watched bands. And then we're like, oh, that's that's a scene going on here, East London. Let's check this. Or there is a scene going on in South yeah. London. Fuck, where is this place? Let's check it out, you know? Here in London, we played probably around 30 different venues. Yeah. And we realize there's still another hundred venues that we don't know. <laughs> yeah, when I saw your tour list of the upcoming tour and the previous all all the all the shows, man, it's like, and most of them are in England and a lot of in London. I was like, yeah, what what the hell, you know? Because you're the first band that uh, I interview who's from London. And uh, if you talk to other bands from different cities, like we don't have so many venues here, you know, there's no tours, you know, like. A, uh-huh. But with you, it's just like whoa, completely opposite. And we and we love driving, we love traveling. So for us, it was almost like we we get to know with the band, we've got to know so much of the UK that we probably wouldn't even got a chance if we were not in a band because there are places which mm. even the locals they ask us like what the fuck are you guys doing here oh like, man we've been everywhere <laughs> we've been everywhere yeah i tell my english friends like, i know your country better than you mate because <laughs> i do like we've been all over the place and what about europe tours in europe when was the last time so the last time was this this that we played the end. yeah we played, no no, no? We, we played france and ah, belgium yeah, we did we did france and belgium with tara we, we did Belgium with Tara was the last one, and, and then France, and then we did before that South of France, like three nights. Yeah, I remember Toulouse and and so on. So, but Leon. Then, yeah, very alternative places, very cool places, very cool bands. Fun. Yeah. Europe, French people are hmm. amazing. We love French people. I would say Europe has a thing. That's that's when you like when you realize with with all the respect to the promoters here because I know they do what they can around here, but. Outside, as soon as you leave UK, it's they it's just a diff- they look after you. It's just a different approach, you know. It's like okay, we are on the same boat: venues, promoters, and musicians, kind of. So in France, like we were fucking hell, like they 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 would cook, you know, like fresh fucking food, and everything is chilled. I remember I got actually emotional, like I didn't cry, but I got emotional in the sense of we we arrived in this place to play. And and we had that London mentality, which is like, oh, you arrive and sound check and da 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 six o'clock open, pop 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 play. We arrived there and they were like, oh hi, how are you? Da da da. So here is some wine and you can put your stuff here. And this is like after two hours, nothing happening, no sound check. And I was just like, oh, uh, a guy's like, so no, no, you guys chill. We're gonna start soon. First, we're gonna have dinner. And I was like, what? So they set up the table, again, more wine, all the bands together in this big table, having wine. And I was just like, oh, this, this is, it was so nice and chilled. And I was so not used to that, that I remember talking to Akhunj and Fabio, I was just like, okay, if we don't even play a gig tonight, I'm already happy. It's just like, I'm learning to chill. Mm-hmm. It was just like that. Oh, in, in Vienna so, as so well, different. we had like this. Vienna, oh my God, it was amazing. I remember the time I was like, wow. Um, we were in the green room. They had a fridge with amazing with beer. Three types of beer ah. and 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 soda and water and uh, chocolate food and, and yeah. snacks and everything. This was a hangover gig as well. Remember? It was amazing because we went hangover. out. I went out with some of my cousins the night before, and <laughs> it was and you got massive, drunk. Yeah, and it was such a bad massive idea. Hangover. Massive hangover. <laughs> Basically, good beer. So how can you say no? 
Yeah. And and I, and it was a summer day and it was so hot uh -huh. and the venue did not turn the ACs on because it was like, it's not going to be a big night. It's not going to be too busy. So no need. This was the first time that I almost passed out on stage because I went for a jump and then it's just like kind of poof, blackout. I just looked to our guitarist at the time. It was like, you're okay. I was just like, I need water. And then like finished the song, had some water. I remember we finished the gig. Everybody was super excited, da, da, da. and I just remember I need to, I need some air because I, I will throw up. Like, and then my cousin, bless her, comes with me with a shot of vodka, like super, that was super guy, yeah, la, la. and I was just like, oh no! I had the shot because I thought that's rude not to have it, but I had the shot. I looked at her, looked at Fabio, like I'm going to the toilet, so I disappear, you know. Then I went back and everything went to normal, was all good. But it was, it was a great night. But it was, yeah, I think we played that. So it was Vienna. Then uh, on the Vienna uh, kind of circuit, we did Vienna, Prague, and... Hungary. And Hungary. Yeah. And then since since that, we, we had a few gigs booked in Germany for next year. We were supposed year. to play last yeah. year. Last yeah. year in Germany. And we, we were working in to book something in Austria as well, and then Belgium again. But then COVID. So it was kind of that up and down. Yeah. Now you can go, now you cannot go, blah, blah, blah which is understandable, but it was just the uncertainty, you know? So we just spoke to the venues like, okay, let's let's try it again another time. So you don't lose money in the last minute. We don't lose fares because you have to book the, the plane and everything before. But let's see, like if all goes right, uh, we've decided not to try this year unless an invite comes. So if anyone in Austria wants to book us, we are that crazy of a band that we would go for one gig only. So if there is an opportunity for us to go, we make a holiday out of it. We don't give a shit. We love to play. We love to get to know new venues. We love to share the stage. So we would do that. But in terms of planning a tour, we're planning for next year. But may that not stop you from inviting us. I highly possible that, that after this, uh, when it comes out, or maybe just before that, I will get in touch with some promoters at the venues. It's, it's highly possible. Thank you, sure. Yeah. You know, I read somewhere in the interview that you don't consider yourself a musician. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about you, but I don't. I consider myself no, a, no, a, a performer, really. but not a musician. Like, I, 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 no, to be worry. honest, I think lately I can't, because I think most people, especially if you work with anything uh, creative, you have this imposture, imposture syndrome. And uh, for me, for many years, it, it's been the same. It's like you never really take yourself uh, seriously enough. And I realized like, God damn, like I've been doing this for so many years. Yeah, we should. I'm not yeah. a I'm I'm not a, like a orchestra musician, but I, I know my way around a few instruments and I know what I'm doing, you know. I'm pretty sure I'm, you know, at a, a decent level <laughs> if you put me against, you know, probably most pop stars out there. I, I'm pretty sure I, I know more about writing music and playing than than they do. I know how to program music as well and shit. All so. right, Fabio, you are a musician. Yeah. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not a producer. <laughs> but. Yeah, I I don't. I, I think I agree with what Fabio said. Is is kind of a, a being comfortable with that with that label maybe. But I'm pretty comfortable being labeled as a, a performer and an artist. But musician for me is is such a strong word that personally I don't. I don't wear that T-shirt. I don't feel comfortable uh -huh. calling myself that. Yeah, once again, because we have a lot of respect for musicians that dedicate their entire lives to studying That's the thing. and That's improving the thing. and and you know playing all sorts of music genres. I can definitely I can tell you like I'm a I'm a rock musician. I probably cannot play many different styles, but I can play rock. That's what I know. That my specialty. Cool. It's like uh, with me, I have I can't call myself an artist, even though, for example, I make animation and motion design and music videos like that. I can't call myself artist. I don't feel the artist got so devalued in a way because everybody calls artist or mm. or or in other way. For me, artist is somebody who's like hanging on the wall in a museum and only time will tell if you are artist or not. But I have this imposter syndrome all the time. I just accepted it and uh, that's fine. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh, what are your plans? So you you said that uh, you have an upcoming uh, tour. 
in the United Kingdom. What else? What's what else is planned? So we have we have quite a few gigs booked then for UK. So the Lips Can Kill, which is with these three bands we played last year. And we're playing again this year. She's really not counting COVID, guys. <laughs> what? <laughs> like it wasn't last year. <laughs> oh yes, I keep I keep ignoring. I ignore that last year did not happen. And okay. not the one and the one before. And yeah. okay. I, I I always have you to count on on putting me in my in, in the right place. So and two years kill. ago Lips Can Kill. We had the Lips Can Kill. So we have the Lips Can Kill tour this year. If all goes well, we're doing all the dates. Um then we have Rebellion Festival, which we're really looking forward to this year because we, since we started the band, of course, we wanted to, to, to jump in this festival. And we managed before COVID to get invited and then it got canceled. And we were just like, fuck this. Yeah. But we got invited to play it again this year. So that's happening in August and we're really looking forward. And we're building up a tour in Ireland for August as well. And maybe US September. But it will depend yeah, on, but on it's gigs still that we a big can get. maybe. Still a big maybe because we want to try to how to say adventure ourselves in on we the east coast. We want to try the east coast. Yeah. yeah, we that's when we are starting to kind of now asking venues and checking out. Mm-hmm. So us and Tara who so we are the two bands doing that and and see see what happens. So that's kind of a how and, to say an thing, unknown area. Yeah, the thing about us and I the scene that we're part of. Is that most of the bands? It's not like mainstream music, you know. That you have that artist, he can only play that tour, that those gigs. That's it. You just go there to like two months, and that's it. You don't do anything else the rest of the year. No, we're always playing. So throughout the year, lots of other invites are gonna sh- yeah show up. But we're probably gonna book a few more gigs. It's it's just more uh, fluid, more organic, you know. We don't have to announce like, hey, this year we're going to play that tour and that's it. No, we're going to yeah. do lots of gigs. It keeps changing. And and we like that. I think because because we're not in our 20s, we don't want to waste time as well. So we just want to do it and leave the moment. Yeah, we don't have time for bullshit no. and drama and, you know, we just want to keep going. Which is a lot in the scene. It's so funny. I thought this was kind of those drama days were past, but like it's almost you're in kindergarten again. Even in the rock and roll scene, so you're always like, "Oh, seriously?" So I don't, we don't have time for that. It's like you guys fight over here. We're gonna play a gig over there. If you fancy join us, it's funnier there. <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, young bands. Another question from the band from London that's in London for the last three years is like, where do you get a good rehearsal space in London? Because they only found only expensive ones. Okay, Ooh, now that's tough. We had a really good one. We had two good ones that they closed down. Oh, the, yeah. The problem is the places <laughs> are closing happen. down constantly. Yeah. So we had a brilliant one, cheap, but then it's gone. The best one we found is Pirate Studios. That's the one we we've been using because you can find all over the UK. So if you are in in route and you need to rehearse, you can find. Yeah, we shouldn't be doing advertising for them. But the, the good thing but is like the they have we... several places in london <clears throat> so it, you can just go book online there's not a lot of hassle they have lots of places in london yeah and they're the ones we're, we're using and so. to be honest that's the only one we have near where we live now yeah all the places are gone you know i saw that on youtube by the way you have a really cool youtube channel <laughs> you have music video, you have music videos and you have uh, the, the series that you have lost in translation oh yeah yeah can you please a little bit talk about that and why have you started that and what's it about because it's actually like an opener like it's, it's like really cool behind the scenes uh serious so yeah we to be honest we didn't have any intention of doing that i did well we did a couple of videos before uh when we released the the first single uh and 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 then i was applying to this um different playlists and things and we started getting some feedback from bloggers and from media people from these playlisters and I thought it was really funny because like most of these people, they dedicate probably 10 seconds to listen to a track and decide if they want that track or not. And they don't do any any background research. So basically, they start assuming who you are just by listening to 10 seconds of a song. Uh, and then like we had so many funny uh, comments, comments yeah, that yeah. We, we just did a whole video reading the, co- the negative comments about the music. 
And then a lot of people say, oh, that was really funny. You guys should do, try and do more videos like that. And then some friends said, like, why don't you guys do something talking about your songs, how you come up with the songs and stuff. And then we thought, like, well, we can try, you know. Uh, we have the time. <laughs> so let's yeah, do it. Yeah, I mean, it was hard work, but we managed yeah. to do, like, 10 episodes no, almost is, weekly. We, yeah, we, we had a thing that... When we started, we were like, now we will have to go until the end because then we've decided it's going to be about the album. So 10 songs, yeah. 10 episodes. Cannot be less than this. Now, if it's more than this, only time will tell. But yeah, when we yeah. started, we were like, now we're fucked. We need to do this. Yeah, now we're taking a break because we finished the album, talking about the new album. And uh, we might we might return but we need to find different things to talk about. Uh, you know, we have a few ideas, so who knows? Maybe soon we might have some, some new episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also wait probably for the feedback from the people because you constantly <laughs> interact with the people. Yeah. And, uh, fuck, I forgot what I want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, I wanted to ask that uh, the Tropical Fuzz, I really love that album. Everything, actually. Everything is polished. Uh, actually, it's not a question, it's a comment. Uh, everything is super cool. Like, who, who's doing the design? Fabio. Me? Yeah, it's really cool. And the social media also you're doing, or like you're like splitting the stuff? We kind of split, like, the, the boring stuff is usually me. If there is something with a little bit more thoughtful or more colors, it's Fabio. Yeah. Because we, we just kind of keep it going, but we, are, we don't have the patience, to be honest. So if we have... Just to keep it going, of course, we have some really cool photographers that come, colleagues of ours that come to gigs, and, and we want to share what they did because sometimes they manage in a picture to to translate the energy that is going on, and I, I find it it's such a shame not to share those things, but I'm terrible on thinking about what to write about it, so like those ones, I would say, whatever is written is boring is me, but the cool pictures, still me. But anyway, artworks is usually Fabio. Fabio is the, the creative behind the whole concept of Tropical Fuzz. Well, whatever you do together, it works because that's how I discovered you. Immediately, all together, just whoop, whoop. Uh, quality stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Super guile. Have you seen this advertising? Like, I, I always talk to people about this advertising and not many people heard of it. Like, But I think it's, a, Ger German. it's a German it's one, German. I think. But I, I just absolutely love it. Like, Zupa Uki, Zupa Sushi, Zupa Mushi, Zupa Guy. So I'm, <laughs> anyway, sorry, totally. We'll leave this at your discretion we'll if you want to edit out. out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I will check. <laughs> I don't know. Most of the time I do editing only so that I would sound smarter so I can edit myself. And because of this, I have to yeah. edit the whole episode. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I would just leave it because it takes a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, we we love podcasts in general, and uh, we actually we had we almost started a podcast like ten years ago <laughs> <laughs> when it wasn't cool. <laughs> but now it's cool, right? Everybody lo loves podcasts. Everyone's doing a podcast. So, how do you know. feel about your podcast? I wanted to do a podcast for three years, and then I was like doing research how to do it and what do I need for that to do, and then. One day I just said, fuck it, I have an opportunity, <laughs> I have a band, so let's just do a live Instagram live session. So it's going to be a proof of concept. So I had the band Psychic Hit, and then we just recorded live without editing, and I did the questions. I was super nervous, especially with live, you know, but that was enough for me to, to understand that it should work. And that's, that's, how, that's why we're here. Nice. Nice. But you can still do the podcast, you know, like uh, your own. Yeah, because we were thinking like the loss in translation, if it's just two of us, it might get to a point that is like, it's a bit tired. You know what I mean? And we think like if we did something like a podcast, you can always have a different guest and then you have something different to talk about. Yeah, you should invite people to like, especially if, if it's possible, if you're in London in person and you have in camera, yeah. And then yeah, definitely. I would recommend. You already look cool on 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 camera. <laughs> you already have everything ready for that. So you should ch try it out. Try it out with friends. If we do our first podcast, Arthur has to be the first. 
the first guest to join us because thanks to him super psychic hits is gonna happen yeah unfortunately we're uh almost out of time there's more questions i would like to ask but oh no let's go for it for the next time so um where can people follow your mom you can follow us in all the shenanigan places um uh, spotify apples youtube and so on um <clears throat> apples 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 apple trees but I, w- i would say like yeah youtube is always a good one like if you could subscribe because we might be able to monetize it in the future and it won't cost you as a fan anything so if you could subscribe to our yeah. youtube it would be amazing and then our newsletter actually on www.yurmum.com we don't send many like emails. propagandas and emails but it's literally once a month with kind of updated dates or any promotion that we might throw it on the month depending on the mood so these two i would say are the main ones but you can find us literally everywhere You want you uh-huh. will find us on TikTok but I can't be bothered updating fucking TikTok. I'm oh, just too yeah, old for that shit. No. So nope. And no snap for chat. If we could, well. if we could, we we would just like leave all social media. Yeah, but we you cannot. Know, we would. But yeah, email if you don't like any drama, email newsletter is probably the best yeah. way to, to know what's happening, to, to know that we're still alive once a month. Drama free. Yeah, and then like social media if you have time and patience. Yeah, everybody should go subscribe to the newsletter, check out YouTube channel, Please. subscribe to Spotify and buy the tickets for the upcoming tour. Yes. Yes, please. Please. And which song are we going to hear at the end of the episode? Ah, shall we go for Do you have a, a favorite one, Arthur, that you would like to hear in the end of this episode? I usually try not to choose. I uh, say like choose a song that the best represents your band. As a starter, like gateway drug. Gateway drug. Gateway drug. Banana mm. Maybe one of the music videos, so it's easier to find on YouTube. Okay. True. Yeah. So yeah, Banana Republic. So Banana Republic, because I think it it kind of shows the the loudness that a two piece can get and the Brazilian side, the Brazilianessness and the stonernessness. It's like it's. I think I think Banana Republic approach is kind of lots of ticks lots of boxes and introduce well the tropical fuzz album so yeah all right thank you very much Annalisa and Fabio thank you very much for this thank you thank vielen you dank are. Arthur Mwah. see you next time
Thank you for listening to Interceptor Beyond Podcast. Don't forget to follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you like what you're hearing, rate the show on Spotify or any other podcast platform that you prefer.